Hi there and welcome to another video. This is Jennifer McGuire. Today I wanted to share with you how to create stained glass window cards. I've done a stained glass window technique in the past and I'll link to it up here on the top right. What's different about today's video is that you can see through the stained glass effect on the front to the inside of the card. It's just a fun way to make your cards a little extra special and works with many different dies that you may have. I have several examples for you and each shows a different variation of the technique. These cards are great for anyone who likes to put a little extra care into their cards for someone special. Okay, let's get started with this card here. This features the new Simon Says Stamp Crocus Flowers die set. I like that this die set comes with two flowers that face each other, so you can use them separately or together. I'm starting with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card and then a piece of cardstock that's slightly smaller at four by five and a quarter. And that's a soft blue scrap that I had. Before we die cut, I'm stamping the Simon's a Stamp UR Background Stamp with Hero Arts Soft Sky Ink. Now this is a tone on tone look that's just subtle and adds a little interest to the background. I'm now taking the two crocus dies and I've taped them together because I like that positioning and I'll die cut that from that blue panel. I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6, but you could use any die cut machine you may have. I now need to cut those dies from our note card. So I'm centering that panel on the front of our note card and our note card is open. Then I'll pop the dies into the openings and run that through our die cut machine. This will cut through our front panel, which it's already done, and press into our white note card. Now it's probably not gonna cut completely through our white note card. So what I do is remove the blue piece, pop the dies into the creases that have been made or the impression that was made into our white note card, and then I run it through again. This time it will cut through the note card itself. So we have the crocus flower windows cut in our note card and the front panel of our card. Now it's time to create the stained glass effect for our note card. To do this, I'm using our blue panel that we stamped on and die cut as kind of a guide. This will kind of give me the lines in which I need to add the color to our stained glass. So I'm just temporarily taping in the die cuts that we just created. Those are what I will follow as I do my coloring on my acetate. I'm going to tape this down to a piece of white cardstock just to hold it still so you can see. On top, I'm taping a piece of acetate. You can use recycled plastic. I'm just using a piece from a Hero Arts note card. So you can see the acetate is taped over our die cut background panel. I'm using Copic markers to color the acetate. Basically, I'm adding color to the open areas of our die cut background. I listed the colors that I use on the top left. If you don't have Copic markers, you could use Sharpies for this too. Now you could color back and forth to fill in these areas, but I found I get much better results if I just kind of pounce or dab dots of color onto the acetate. That way the color is more true to what it is. If you scribble back and forth, the color gets pretty light. So I recommend just dabbing color onto the acetate. Notice that I'm blending between a dark color and light color. I first put down dots of a dark color, and then I go over those dots with a light color and then continue to fill in the rest of the area. This gives somewhat of a blended look. You could scribble back and forth if you want, but the color will be much lighter than the true color of the marker, so that's just something to keep in mind. Remember that I'm only putting color on the acetate. Those cardstock die cuts and panel are behind the acetate, and I'm just using them as a guide. Once I've colored all of the flower and leaves in, I will lightly heat set this with a heat gun or just set it aside for a while. Don't apply too much heat because you don't want to warp the acetate. You just want to dry it. Okay, next I have a piece of white cardstock that I'm going to put Stick It double-sided adhesive on. This is a very thin double-sided adhesive that's perfect for die cutting. I like to put the adhesive on the back of the cardstock press it in with a bone folder, and then I have an adhesive backed cardstock. I will then cut the crocus flowers from this cardstock. And basically I have white crocus cardstock stickers that I can add on top of my coloring. 
So all I'm going to do is line up the stickers that I just created with the flowers that are behind the acetate. So I'm gluing these onto the acetate themselves. And you can see how the coloring is beautiful and perfect inside the lines of the white acetate because I use the die cut flowers behind it as a guide. Now you could glue these flowers down with liquid adhesive or other adhesives you may have. I just find that the stick it adhesive is great because you can move it around until you're happy with the position and then you can press it down with a bone folder. I'm now going to remove this from our background and we can start to assemble our card. I'm going to trim off the excess around the acetate because we don't need all of it there. I'm putting an adhesive on the back of our light blue stamped background. And then I will lay this over our acetate piece that has the die cuts, white die cuts glued to it. This will form the front of our note card and it has that color acetate showing through. Now we have our note card itself. I'll put adhesive on the front of this too. You could use any adhesive you want here. And then I will glue the panel onto this, making sure that the die cut windows on the front of our note card line up with the die cut windows on that front panel. Already you can see the stained glass effect that you get, but I'm going to build that up even more. Off screen, I die cut four of each of the crocus flowers. I'm going to glue them together so that I have a stacked dimensional look. I decided to use a spray adhesive this time to glue the layers together. Usually I use a liquid adhesive, but when I have a lot of gluing together to do, I do a spray adhesive and I take it outside and I spray into a box. So I end up with four white die cuts glued together for each of our crocus flowers. For this process, you can use spray adhesive, liquid adhesive, or even stick it adhesive, whatever you have. I just found this was the fastest. Now I'm gluing those layered die cuts right onto the white die cut that we have on the front of our card. I like to put something heavy on it while it dries. And now you can see we have dimensional white die cuts on the front of our card, which are basically walls, which will let us add something into those open clear areas. Before we do that, I die cut two additional flowers, one of each, and I'm gluing them to the inside of the card so that the inside of the card looks very clean. So you can see how that lines up perfectly. Basically the die cuts are upside down and it works great. Okay, so now you could stop here if you wanted to. And you can see how you can see through each of the flowers and leaves to the inside of the card. But I wanted to give this a stained glass effect. I was inspired by this in church the other day. And what I'm doing is putting Ranger glossy accents into the open areas of the flowers and the leaves. I squeeze some of the product into the open areas, and then I use my craft pick to push the product around and up into the nooks and crannies so that it completely fills in the area. When this dries, you'll get a really cool stained glass effect that is just beautiful in real life. I wish I could capture it in the video, but it's worth the time and effort. After I filled in all of the open areas on the die cuts, I set it aside to dry overnight. It dries beautifully. Now it's time to add the sentiment. For the sentiment, I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp just because Word Mix 2 stamp set. Now on the left, I have the Word Mix 1 stamp set that come at, came out a while ago. On the right, we have the current Word Mix 2 stamp set. Now the cool thing about these stamp sets is they line up perfectly with the same die. This die will cut out all of the sentiments. So what you can do is stamp any of these images, then you can use the die to cut them out and you have a bunch of sentiments to add to your card. So I thought I'd demonstrate this. This is the new Word Mix stamp set. I'm using my Misty stamping tool and using white cardstock. I'm inking up the sentiments with Altenew Obsidian Black Pigment Ink. I'll then press that and then add clear embossing powder to it. When I heat set this, you'll see I have a bunch of different sentiments, different styles, different messages, and different sizes, and different shapes. After I heat set these, I can use that one die to cut them all out at once. I then have many messages that I can use on different cards. I'll use one message on this particular card, but then I can save the messages for the other. Now here, I'm using the other large stamp from the Word Mix 2 stamp set. Stamped it with black pigment ink, 
added clear embossing powder, heat set it, and the same die will cut these out. So this is what it looks like, the die that lines up perfectly. I'll line it up with some purple tape, run it through my die cut machine, and look at all of these sentiments. I like to use the one that I need for this particular card and save all of the others in a little bowl for future cards. And I'll do the same with the other image from the stamp set. I like when you can get a lot out of one stamp set and one die set. And remember this die set works with both of the stamp sets so you can get even more from it. I added one of these die cut sentiments to the front of the card. And now I'm gluing a smaller note card to the inside of the card. This is about three and three quarters by five inches. That way when we write our personal message on the inside, you don't see it through the front of the card. So here's the completed card. You can see through those stained glass flowers to the inside in which there's a little note card to write your message. You can see how much this looks like stained glass, true stained glass with a white trim from the die cuts. Now I have a few variations of this card later on in this video, but I think this one's my favorite where you do the color on the acetate and then add glossy accents to fill it in to make it look like true stained glass. Okay, my second example is a little different. This time I didn't add any glossy accents or color to the acetate. Instead, I have an acetate window on the front of our card, which shows through to the color on the inside of the card. I like both of these variations. It just depends on what supplies you have. This time I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Daffodil Stem Die. This is another new one, similar design to the last, but this time it's a single flower and I really like the look of it. I'm going to die cut this from a piece of Herewart sand cardstock that I've cut down and this will go towards the top left of our note card. So I'll run this through our die cut machine. You could use any die cut machine once again. This time I'm going to cut four different panels just like this one, exactly the same. I want the daffodil to be in the same spot. So I have another piece of Herewart sand cardstock cut to the same size. I'm putting the negative space of the last one and the die right on top, centered on top of the new piece of cardstock. And I'll run this through our die cut machine again. This will make sure that the die cuts in exactly the same spot on this same size piece of sand cardstock. And I'll do this with three other pieces. So I actually end up with five pieces of sand cardstock with a daffodil cut from the center in the same spot. This is a little bit different than last time. I wanted to build up the area around the flower too, not just the frame of the flower. After I cut those, I'm lining up the craft paper with the top left of our note card. Now I'm going to open up the note card and run this through our die cut machine. This will cut the flower on the top left of our note card and it'll line up perfectly with the craft piece that I'll end up wanting to add to the front of our card. Okay, so now it's time to add some color to the inside of our card. So I'm going to use this leftover white die cut and the pieces inside of it to color. I'm coloring the inside pieces using my uh, Copic markers, but you could use any coloring you want. And I'm doing this on my Waffle Flower uh, watercolor media mat. I like this mat because you can easily clean it. So I'm just coloring the different pieces inside of this die cut. Again, you could use scraps for this, watercolor, whatever you want. I decided to use Copic so I could get a blend of color and make sure it's really bold when it shines through our window. After I've colored these pieces, I'll set them aside. Next, we need to add a gold die cut to the inside of our card, and we'll put those colors inside of that die cut for an inlay look. So I have my note card here with the window cut in the front. Right into the opening, I'm adding a gold cardstock die cut. Now I already put adhesive on the back of this die cut, so when I press it into that opening, it will glue to the inside of our note card. So I'll hold it there for a little bit. Once I'm done, I can open up the card and you can see how the gold outline die cut is inside of the card and it lines up perfectly for the, with the window on the front. Now into this gold outline die cut, I'm adding some liquid adhesive from Gina K Designs and I'll glue in those colored die cut pieces that we just created. So I'm basically doing a die cut inlay look here. I'll have all the colored pieces on the inside and a gold die cut on the outside. Any gold cardstock would work here 
If you don't have any gold cardstock, you could use a white piece of white cardstock, cover it with Versamark, add gold embossing powder and heat set it, and then die cut it to get a similar look. Now that the inside of our note card is ready, let's get ready for the front of our card. I die cut three white daffodils and I'm gluing to the, them together for a stacked look. I love that dimension. On top of this, I will add a gold die cut. So it looks like all of them are gold die cut, but really just the top one is. Before we add that to our card, I have one of our craft negative space pieces that we created earlier. I'm putting adhesive on the back of this, any adhesive would work, and I'm going to glue this onto a piece of acetate. Any recycled acetate would work. This happened to be from a piece of stamp packaging. I'll glue that down and then trim the excess away. So I just have the craft negative space with acetate behind it, a perfect window. This will get glued onto our note card, but first I want to add the other craft negative space pieces that we created. They're all the same size, so I'm going to glue them together for dimension. So I have four of them that I'll glue on top of this piece of acetate, making sure they line up each time. After I glued each of those layers together, I decided I wanted to add some interest to that craft piece. So I have my MISTI stamping tool. I put that craft window piece into the MISTI at an angle, and I'm stamping the Simon Says Stamp UR background stamp with Unicorn Pigment White Ink from Hero Arts. This will give a subtle stamped background to that piece. Now I have my stacked white die cut. I'm putting liquid adhesive on the back of this. You could definitely use spray adhesive if you want. And I'll pop that right in. So now we have dimension to the white outline die cut and dimension to the craft piece die cut. And that craft piece has some subtle white stamping on it just to add some fun to it. Once I'm done, I'm adding one last layer of the daffodil die cut. This one is the gold cardstock, so it matches with the inside of the card. So now we have a dimensional piece that we can add to our card. You could have used craft foam behind this, but I feel like this gives a sturdy result. For the sentiment, I use the new Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Clean Line Faith Stamp Set. This has a coordinating die set too. I really like the sentiments in this one that can be used for Easter, but also all year round. So I'm going to stamp one of these sentiments underneath the craft piece where I plan to put it on the front of our card. So I'm doing this in my MISTI stamping tool, and I will stamp this with black ink. And then underneath it, I'll stamp another small sentiment from the same stamp set. Now we can glue our craft piece onto the front of our note card. Remember this has acetate on the back. I'll put some adhesive on it. And then I'll also put adhesive around the flower on our note card window. I'll line those up and this will allow us to look through to the inside of our card. Now when you open up this card, you can see the back of the acetate doesn't look very clean. I think it's best to take another white die cut and glue it into that opening so it looks nice and clean from the inside of the card too. So here's a look at the completed card. We have the gold outline and the window that allows you to see through to the inside. If you wanted to, you could put some of the glossy accents into that window like we did on the last example, but this time I decided to skip that step. And you can see through to the color on the inside. Okay, my third example shows how you can create a stained glass window effect, but this time with a little bit of a shaker element in it. Let's start with the background of this note card. It uses one of my favorite new dies. This is a Simon Says Stamp stitching panel. This is big enough for a five by seven card and I'm really excited because I like to stitch on my cards, but I also like to frame things that I stitch. So the five by seven size is ideal. But you can use this stitching panel die to create dotted backgrounds on your card or to create stencils. Today, I'm using it to create a dotted tone-on-tone -tone look on the back of our white note card. So far, I've die cut this from white cardstock that is four by five and a quarter. Next, I have this new Simon Says Stamp egg die set. So we have the fancy egg and then the outline die with the faux stitching. You can use these together or separately. I'm going to take the outline and die cut that from the dotted background that I just created. This will create a window that's perfect for the effect that we're going for today. I'll lay this panel on the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. 
and then I'll position the Happy Easter die right in the center, tape that in place, open the note card, and run it through our die cut machine. That way I can be sure that they line up nicely. So now we have a note card with the egg window, and then we have the panel with the dots with the egg window also that's a little bit bigger and with the faux stitching details. I'm going to go ahead and glue these two together. I use spray adhesive and I've lined it up for that layered look on the front of our card. I now have a smaller top folding note card that I created for the inside of our card. This is four and three quarters by five inches tall. I'll glue that in the inside so we have a hidden spot for our message. Now through this window, I have a silver die cut that I created with the Happy Easter die. And I have adhesive on the back of it and I'm just lining it up through the window, gluing it onto that mini note card in the inside of our card. So it lines up perfectly with the window on the front. Now we need to put acetate across that egg opening on the front of our card. I have a piece of white cardstock that is five and a quarter by four inches and I'm holding it on the inside front of our card. I'll close the card, trace the egg opening onto it. Now using that pencil line as a guide, I'll take our Happy Easter Egg die, line it up with the pencils, and run that through our die cut machine. That way I can be sure that our egg opening is centered and ready to add on the inside of our card. I'm putting adhesive on the back of that and a piece of acetate. Again, recycled plastic from packaging is perfect for this. Then we'll glue this onto the inside front of our card. This will form the acetate or clear window backing on the egg that we'll have on the front of our card that will actually have a shaker window feature. Off screen, I created three Happy Easter Egg die cuts and glued them together for dimension. And now I'm gluing that on the front of the acetate on the front of the card, lining it up with the silver egg inside. While that dries, I have a piece of silver cardstock. On the back of it, I'm putting Stick It double-sided adhesive. Remember, you can use whatever adhesives you like. Once I have that covered with the adhesive, I'm going to trim it down, press it firmly, and then run that through our die cut machine with the Happy Easter Egg. This will create a silver die cut with the adhesive already on the back. I now have a piece of acetate that I'm just laying on the front of our card. I then am going to take our silver die cut and lay that on the acetate. Remember, it has adhesive on the back and press it in place. The reason I'm doing this on the front of our card is I want to make sure that the silver die cut lines up with the white behind it. I then can trim away all the extra acetate from the edge of our silver die cut. This will be the front of our shaker window. Now into the center area of our white stack die cuts here, I'm adding some fairy dust from Lucy's cards and also some iridescent gemstones. You can put in there anything you want. I'm trying to keep it just around the Happy Easter area, but it's totally up to you. Once I've put some little shaker goodies in there, I'm putting liquid adhesive on the top of our white stack die cut, just to make sure that it's all gonna hold in place when we glue everything down. Once I have the adhesive in place, I can take our acetate piece with the silver die cut on top and lay that right on top, and then put something heavy on it to make sure that it stays put as it dries. Then we have a little area of shaker window in the center that shows through completely to the inside. Now it's time to add some color to this. I went ahead and die cut the Happy Easter die from some scraps of cardstock. I'm now doing an inlay technique and gluing these pieces to the inside of our egg on the inside of our card. That way this color will show through to the front. You could instead do the Copic marker on acetate technique that I showed you earlier but I thought this was fun to only have the color on the inside, like we did with the daffodil card. After we filled in those inlay colored pieces, I just have a white die cut to glue onto the inside acetate just so it looks pretty. And there we have our completed card. So this time our stained glass window effect has a bit of a shaker element to it also. You can see completely through that egg on the front to the colorful egg on the inside, and then a place that opens up for your message inside of that. And then for some added texture on the front of the card, we have that stitching panel background just for a fun dotted effect. I really like how that can be used for many things. Okay, my last example is similar to the first, but this time we're going to step it up by adding a bit of sparkle. 
This card features the new Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Inlaid Cross. That solid cross is a little bit bigger than the two other inlay crosses, which really helps with the technique that we're doing. So I have the front panel of our card, which is four by five and a quarter. I'm using the Trinity Stamps Catching Some Rays stencil, and I'm lining it up so the center of the stencil is towards the top center of our card. I'm using an ink blending tool and the Altenew Enchanted Gold Ink. This is a nice soft gold ink that adds shimmer to your card. And I'm just applying the ink so it kind of radiates from the center of the stencil and blends to nothing. Now at the center of that, I will cut the solid cross. This will be the front of our card. Now I need to cut the solid cross at the center of our note card. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding gold note card. I made it from gold cardstock. I'm lining up the cross right at the center of this and I'll run this through our die cut machine. That way the cross is die cut at the center of our note card and the center of the panel that will go on the front of our note card. Now off screen, I die cut three of the inlaid crosses and glued them together and then glued that onto a piece of acetate. That's what you see here. So it's acetate with three crosses glued on the front. This will go on the front of our card. But before we add that to the card in the window, I want to glue a cross to the inside of our card so we can make sure everything lines up. So here I have stick it adhesive and some gold cardstock. Any gold cardstock would work for this. Again, you could cover cardstock with gold embossing powder if you don't have gold cardstock. So I'll just trim the excess out, press this down firmly, and then die cut the inlay cross from this. This will go on the inside of our card and will show through to the front. Now this is a mini note card that I created to go on the inside. This is three and three quarters by five inches tall. I'm going to glue this onto the inside of our gold note card. The reason I'm doing this on each card is so that I can write a personal message on the inside and that it doesn't show through to the front. I'm closing the card and pressing this inlay cross right at the center of the opening. So this is sticking to that inside note card, but making sure it lines up nicely when the card is closed completely. Once it's in place, I'll go ahead and press it down with a bone folder. Stick it adhesive presses and stays nicely when you push it into place. On the front of the note card, I'm putting some adhesive around the cross opening and I can lay our acetate piece down on top of it, making sure that the white crosses on the front line up with the gold cross on the inside. Now I have our white panel with the cross that also has that gold ink stenciling and I'll put adhesive on the back of this and add this to the front of our card. All of our crosses should line up nicely because we planned everything out. Okay, now I need to add some color to this inside piece. Off screen, I die cut a white cardstock piece from that inlaid cross and I colored the different pieces with marker. You could die cut scraps if you wanted to of different colors. Now I'm gluing them in place in an inlay technique, so I end up with a gold outline cross with rainbow colors in the inside. Remember, that's in the inside of the card. Okay, for a sentiment, I use the Simon Says Stamp CZ design, He Is Risen die set. I die cut the word risen three times from white cardstock and glued it together for a stacked look and glued that to the front of our card. Now I die cut a gold cardstock inlay cross and I'm gluing it right on top of our stacked white ones so we have that nice gold trim. I also die cut the word risen from gold cardstock and I'll glue that on top of our white stack die cut that says risen. By doing white underneath and gold on top, it gives a really nice embellishment look and makes it stand out even more. You'll notice I also stamped he is and indeed around the word risen. That is from the stamp set that I showed you earlier and I stamped it with that gold shimmer ink. Now there's one last thing I wanted to do to make this card a little bit different. This time I'm adding some fine glitter. This is just clear iridescent glitter and I'm putting a little bit into each of the openings on the acetate on the front of our card. I'm tapping it so it kind of spreads around a little bit and then filling in the openings with glossy accents. So instead of putting glossy accents on the inside, I'm putting glossy accents with a little bit of glitter so that it, when, when it dries, I get a glittery or shimmery uh, stained glass effect. I even sprinkled a little bit of the glitter above the wet glossy accents so it had a bit more shine. 
the higher you uh, go when you sprinkle this on, the better distribution you get. You don't get clumps of glitter. You get like a fine bit of glitter over the whole area. So I let that dry and here is the completed card. We have a gold note card with that cross opening, lots of gold cardstock outlines around our cross and on our sentiment. And it's clear with some glitter to it. And this shows through to the color on the cross on the inside. Now you could stamp a sentiment underneath that cross. I'm undecided if I want to add that, but you definitely could. And then there's room for the personal message inside of that. So this is just another fun variation of the stained glass window technique by adding a little bit of glitter to the glossy accents that you put inside. So I hope this encourages you to take your dies and see what you can do to create your own stained glass window effect on cards. These are just a few of the many ways you can do this technique. And be sure to check out my other stained glass window technique if you're interested in seeing more ways to use your products creatively. I have that video and another linked here in the center for you and all of the supplies that I featured in this video are linked in my YouTube description below. Thanks for visiting me today. I hope you have a good week and we'll see you soon.